so this grant is uh, in collaboration with the Center for Innovations in Community Safety at the law school. And we are using the money to build and evaluate a virtual reality training system to teach police officers how to do active bystandership. The way I think about active bystandership is it's a kind of de-escalation that involves intervening on uh, the, a second police officer rather than the situation itself. So there are a lot of these VR systems popping up now. A lot of companies are trying to sell police departments on the use of virtual reality for training. And that makes a lot of sense in a lot of ways because it's cheaper, you can standardize it, and uh, you can pretty much guarantee that you can develop new scenarios in short amounts of time as, uh, as the need arises. The problem is most of these things are not tested very well, they're not evaluated very closely, and we don't, we, we don't really have any understanding of how to make a good scenario that's going to be effective for training. So what we're trying to do is to be rigorous and methodical about how we build and evaluate these things so that we can guarantee that when we get into the field, what we're giving police is actually top-notch training uh, and not just a bunch of uh, video game style um, virtual reality uh, that has a lot of um, features on it but doesn't really do a good job of teaching police what they need to learn to be uh, effective in the field. So there's a few steps to this process. Uh, the first is to actually build the simulation itself. So that's what I've got a team doing right now. A good portion of the CPP grants will go towards funding a postdoctoral researcher who will head up this research project and take it into the field so that we can actually meet with police departments and have the officers use it and evaluate its effectiveness there. Um, a lot of the work that we're doing right now is just to build and test the basic foundations of the system itself. Uh, so before we actually take it in, into the field and know what police are going to do, we want to make sure that uh, everything is running smoothly, that there's no bugs and hiccups. And so uh, most of our time right now is being spent actually trying to um, build and evaluate the functions of the software itself. Hmm. So there's a few places where we can take this research once we're done validating everything. So for one, uh, we want to make sure that we have an effective VR training solution for lots of different types of police departments, not just the ones who can afford really expensive VR equipment. So one of the things that we'll do is we'll make this training more readily available to uh, police departments around the country. Um, and not just police, but also any other kind of law enforcement, um, so that they can also benefit from active bystandership training as well. Um, we're hoping that our system uh, will be one of the more effective ones out there. So we want to make sure that everything that we do is first and foremost not doing any harm to police officers or police training or the general public. So once this scenario is complete and we've tested it and evaluated it, we want to develop a robust and readily accessible solution for people so that police officers and police departments can develop new scenarios as the need arises. So one of the great things about VR is you can add content fairly easily at this point. And so we want to make sure that lots of police departments have VR training that reflects their experience and that suits their needs in the field. And so hopefully we'll have a system that can be extended very easily by people who uh, maybe don't need the, the most technical training, but who know a lot about what's going on uh, with their communities and with the departments. 